board talked to the church, the church made it their own. So I just want to say thank you. I say thank you. Just say you are welcome, Pastor. Thank you so much. We are honored, especially for me after coming from a three years um, as for a missionary work. You come back and uh, this is the kind of love you receive. And uh, I don't take it for granted. Amen. One day I'll be able to explain to you what it did to my heart. Uh, <sighs> Hallelujah. So thank you. Thank you for those who gave, for those who want to give and can give. For, thank you for just being part of our lives. I know Apostle will be able to express his heart. He texted me the other day. He called me. He's like, Pastor Georgia sent me a text. Where is this honor father, honor son thing? He's like, I didn't get it. So I explained to him, and he was so moved in tears by your heart of generosity. So board members, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. So we're going to go do this together. Amen. So we can finish this basement very soon, right? Like in one month. Hallelujah. Like if Pastor Sabit put his heart into it, he's a framer. Hallelujah. I know he will. That's his passion. Praise God. My son is still in the hospital, not because he's not doing well, but it's just a uh, few paperwork that needs to be done. But he should be released by Monday. So he's doing really good. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, let's go into the word of God. What's next? We need to build strength for the weight of the assignment. Amen? Building strength for the weight of the assignment. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. Come and speak to us, God. Come and speak to our hearts this morning. And let your will be done today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, the Bible says in Psalm 68, verse 34, Ascribe strength to God. His majesty is over Israel. His majesty is over cross point. Amen. And his strength is in the skies. Ascribe strength. Strength belongs to God. It's his strength. Amen. Next. The Bible said God is our refuge and strength and never present help in time of need. Amen. God is our strength. The strength we need, it comes only from God. Amen? Amen? Psalm 28 verse 8 says, I'm just going through certain verses. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. He is the strength of our lives. Amen? If this morning you feel like you need strength, Strength comes only from God. Amen. If you feel like life has beat you up, there's no more strength left in you, rejoice. Because there's a God who is a God of strength, who's always at our rescue to give us strength in time of need. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the Bible says when you are weak, his strength is made perfect in our life. It's okay to be weak. As a Christian, it's okay to be weak. Say, it's okay for me to be weak. Because if I'm weak, then I'm strong. Then I experience the strength of God in my life. Amen. And the more you get close to God, the more he, 
It's like he wants to remove he, your strength so that he can put his strength in you. Hallelujah. Because he knows how we want to make things happen by ourselves. For some, he gave greater strength naturally. And for those, it takes a little longer for him to make that strength your weakness. So that he can make his strength perfect in your, in your life. Hallelujah. Jacob, you are too strong, so I have to wrestle with you. If I have to break your leg until there's no more life in you, I'll do it. Because I want to change your name. Because it's not your strength that will bring you to your destiny. It's my strength in you. It's not your power that will bring you to your destiny. It's my power in you. Hallelujah. Is there anybody who's, going, who's been going through so much, they feel like all the strength has been gone? We call that surrendering. Amen. Hallelujah. For God does not want us to boast in our strength. Am I talking to a dead church today? Am I communicating? Hallelujah. For God does not want you to boast in your strength. Whatever that you will boast about about you, God will break it. Because God wants to bring glory into your life. Hallelujah. When the strength of somebody becomes a weakness in God's eyes, you are ready for a battle with Jesus. He's ready to send you into the wilderness. But nobody in this place is like that. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Did some people have been in the wilderness to be broken by God? Because they've been too strong in their own strength. Because they've been too capable in their own ability. Do you know what I've come to understand? All this journey of life is about us putting our strength under control to the strength of God. We call it submission. Amen? Submission is strength under control. Okay, wives? Submission is your strength under control. I like what we did. She just went behind her husband. She's like, I'm hidden in pastor job. Praise the Lord. When you see a woman after 20 years go behind her husband, you know this woman. And you know this man. Praise the Lord. Happy anniversary. It was so profound. When she did that just, I look at her and say, my God. Nowadays, a woman going to be, I have to stand beside my husband. He is the same like me. We are the same. Eh? Can I talk to some strong women today? Mm. Who? Who is he? Who is he? I'm going to stand like him. No, no, just hide. Strength under control. Submission. We're not going back into this marriage today. <laughs> But you see, with God, it's about your strength being under control into the hands of the master. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Because our strength sometimes gets in the way. I say it gets in the way. Because then God tells you, you're going to be this powerful evangelist. Ah! He said it. I'm going to make it happen. Strength. Not under control. Amen. And then you start running the race. You start running, doing things, and they don't work out. You wonder, God, you said I'll be this powerful businesswoman. You said I'll be this powerful evangelist. How come? I'm not happening. Nothing is happening. And God said, I, I prophesied to you, but I didn't tell you to make it happen. Am I talking to somebody? I prophesied to you so that you believe that I have something for you. Not that you can make it happen. You know, today I was thinking about the, when Jesus was being 
prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. And they'll say that a virgin will, you know, will carry a child. I was like, I wonder how many virgins tried to be pregnant in the spirit of Jesus. Those virgins who couldn't have husband, they'd be like, yeah, maybe that prophecy was for me. Trying to make it happen <laughs> in your own strength. Did Mary make it happen? No. What happened? At the right time, at the set time, an angel of the Lord came and visited Mary. And the very voice that was prophesied now was spoken in the life of this woman. And it came to pass. So we need to stop making things happen. Strength under control. This week, two days ago, three days ago, early in the morning, God started speaking about prophecy to me. And I started feeling like a lot of people are struggling with the prophetic word God gave them. Why? Because they are trying to make it happen. And because it's not happening, they are frustrated, tired, overwhelmed. And they don't believe it was God speaking to them. Today I'm here to tell you, I spoke it to you. God says I will make it happen in you and through you. Strength under control. Anything you do in your strength, you will get your glory. But anything you do under God's grace and God's strength, he gets the glory. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody today? Am I talking to somebody today? Hallelujah. We are like Virgin Mary's God. Okay, whenever you're going to make it happen, you're going to lead me. You're going to push me. You're going to a little bit, step by step, not this strength. i got to make it happen by force, by fire. This is 21st century. we got to be powerful women and men of God by force, by fire. This is for the world. In quietness and rest, you will fulfill the call of God on your life. I say in quietness and rest. Hallelujah. How do we build our strength? For the assignment of our lives. By the way, Pastor Twee, I don't know what happened the last three years of your life. I watch you talk. I'm like, this is a different woman. You have become so powerful. You don't have to agree with it. I see it. Keep it up, whatever you're doing. Amen? How to build strength for our assignment. My verse we're going to use today is from, next, can you put it up for me? Listen. The majority of time, we fall into our purpose. We don't make it happen. Say, I fall into my purpose. As long as I'm serving God, I'll find myself into my purpose. We are not here to go after our purpose. We are here to go after the God of purpose. And we're going to find ourselves doing the very thing God has called us for. It doesn't look like the way you think it looks like. It never looks like the way you think it looks like. Am I talking to somebody today? You know why I'm saying that? Because I've seen the enemy making the people of God. They take the word of God that God has spoken to them. And they try to make it happen. And then they become tired, overwhelmed, frustrated because they don't see fruit in it. Am I talking to somebody? Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added to you. God is so committed for you fulfilling your purpose more than you do. God is so committed to be productive because there's a reason he brought you on this earth. God does not waste time, money, life, strength on something. Do you understand? He took the time to create you. He took the time to put a DNA 
about you that is so specific for the assignment he has for you. Amen. Am I talking to somebody that he will take the time as long as you, you are like, I'm here, God. Strength under control. He'll bring you where you need to be. I say he'll bring you where? How many of you are here doing things you never thought you could do in your life? Listen, if I had to do what I thought God wanted me to do, I wouldn't be here. I would have called, no, me, I'm called to make money. You know, 13th floor, downtown Calgary, oil company. Yeah, I went. I did engineering. I said, yeah, that's where I'm going. That was not okay for me. Okay, because the word of God has spoken to me, don't. And I said, no, 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 I have to. I need to make a name for myself. Are you hearing me today? Strength under control. Hallelujah. So, Philippians 4, 12 to 13. I want to loose and set people free so they can just relax. In God. I say relax in God. I say relax in God. God who was able to create heaven and earth doesn't need our hand into his work. He wants our collaboration. Am I speaking to somebody? Eh? Relax in God. Listen, as long as you seek God, you will never miss on your destiny. As long as you seek God, you will never miss on your calling. I guarantee you 100%. Do you understand? Do not worry. God, I'm getting old. God, when is it going to happen? God said, just be still and know that I am God. If I can turn the whole world in three years through my son Jesus, I can use you to change this nation even in a day. Relax in God. Nowadays as Christians we are tense. God, am I in your will? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Am I doing your call to? God is like, hey, hey, chill, 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 chill. Listen. Salvation without your permission, I brought you to salvation. I can bring you into your destiny without you being part of it. Chill. Love me. Love people and serve me. It is well. It is well. Okay, can we release ourselves a little bit from the stress of trying to pursue, to accomplish, to do this and to do that? It takes too much strength. Hallelujah. It takes too much anxiety. God, I'm dying. God, I'm getting old. God, what am I going to get there? God, 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 God. God. And then we are tired. We are frustrated. Huh? Because nowadays the enemy doesn't need to use things of the world. He knows you'll catch it. He used the very thing you're passionate about. To distract you. To tire you out. So you can be discouraged. And not believe anymore. Church of God. Today we are about to enter into a chill ministry. Chillax ministry. Today I'm chillaxing. (laughs) Chillaxing. Yeah, chill. Philippians 4, 12 to 30. He said, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. He said, I have learned the secret of being content, content in any and every situation. Mm. He said, I have learned what? The secret of being content. Today, we need to learn the secret of being content in God. 
Because if you are a Christian who is content in God, no devil in hell will come to try to make you do things that God has called you to do. He said, I have learned the secret. This is Paul speaking out of prison. Am I communicating? Now, to live, to build strength for your assignment, number one, you need to be a Christian who is content. I say, say I must be content. Hallelujah. Contentment, a state of happiness and satisfaction. Oh my God, that's a tough one. That's why you gotta learn because our nature is very discontent by anything, everything. We want more, we want it now, we want it big, we want it more powerful, and we want it the way we want it. Just imagine Adam and Eve, and the serpent comes, they were, they were in the glory of God. And that spirit of covetousness, the devil used it to get to Eve. He said, did God really say? See, this tree is powerful. He's hiding something from you. He was, she was not content. She did not believe in the full provision of her God. That God loved her too much. That she get, he gave her everything she needed. That the very thing he didn't give her was for her own protection. How many of us, you know that same devil is still working today in our lives. A spirit of discontentment is in the life of the Christian people. She said, eh, this tree, this apple tree, I don't know why they call it apple, it's good. <laughs> I never understood why it was an apple. He said, she said, mm, God is hiding out on me. Isn't that what we do sometimes? We feel discontent by what God has given us, our portion at this season, at this time. Now, what I'm saying, I'm not saying don't go for more because God has called us to go for more. Amen? God has called us to produce. God has called us to increase. God has called us to create. Amen? That's not what I'm saying. Are you hearing me? It's important. Amen? The Apostle Paul was a man of vision, a man of purpose. He was going for more people to bring the gospel wherever he could. Amen? But I'm talking about a spirit of discon discon discontentment, huh? which is driving our lives without us knowing. So what is the secret of being content? Number one. Contentment means a state of happiness and satisfaction. Today, God asked me to ask you a question to each one of you. I want you to close your eyes. And God is asking a question to each one of you. Am I enough for you? Am I more than enough for you? Today, God is asking, I know what I have placed inside of you. I know what drives you to succeed for this and that. But God is saying, am I more than enough for you? You will never be content until you realize that all that you need in this life, it's God and more God and more God. And until you enter that place of rest, of settling, you will always be discontent. Amen? Number one, 
We must learn the secret, open your eyes, of contentment. Number one, we need to stop comparing ourselves. Turn to your brother and your sister and say, can you stop comparing to me? Turn to your sister and say, please, it's about time you stop. It's about time you stop. You will never be content when you are comparing yourself to the person next to you. Now, we grew up as African parents, you know. We grew up in African homes. You bring your school bulletin. How do you call it in English? Your report card. Ah, was trauma for some of us. Especially if they are Nigeria, it's another level. Competition is difficult in Nigeria. They look at your report card. Huh, you're number two. Who was number one? What did he, did she have that you don't have? Comparing, uh-huh. Since we are young, they are comparing us. Did you see your neighbor, the neighbor's kid? Why can't you behave like her? Why can't you behave like comparison? And we grow up being compared to people, to things. Do you understand? The struggle is real. <laughs> That's why we need to be careful how we compare our children. We should not be comparing our children with other people. No more. I have a cousin. Every, I went to school. So he, his son was in the same school with me. Every end of the year, we get a Report card. Yeah, he would come straight at home. Since I was little, because we always studied together. The first thing when he got home, uh, can I see your report card? And when I was growing up, I was like, what's wrong with this man? You know, he, he always wanted to make sure his son did better than him, than me. Competition, comparing all the time. It was a driving force. And I was young, and I, I thought something was wrong with it every Three months, he would come because we have three semesters. He would come to check my, my report card to compare it to his son's report card. And in the beginning, I was smarter. He must have suffered. <laughs> he must have suffered. Then in high school, we got distracted somewhere. Eh? And then he would be more happy because I wasn't doing that well. But comparison all the way. So if we need to live a life full of contentment, we need to stop. Stop. Don't compare me to the wife's neighbor, my husband. Don't compare me to, my, to the husband's neighbor, my wife. Don't compare me. Don't compare me. Don't compare me. Listen to me. We need to stop with this comparison. You know, now husband and wife, they make a plan. Yeah, we're going to wait before we buy a house or this car. We go to bed. And then the wife goes on social media at night. Huh. Tuku, tuku, tuku. Yeah. She got a Mercedes. Ah! Did you see her purse? Now it's Louis Vuitton. She closes. I'm not talking to anybody. And then at night, the husband thinks there's peace in the house. From nowhere. No. No. I want that car too. I want my Mercedes. The husband is like, but we talked about it. No, 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 no. I got to have it. Why? Because you saw your neighbor having it. And then you're like, oh, I got to have it too. Listen, this is not from God. I, I, now I tell women in the ministry, I say, please, don't even dare to compare yourself to me. I'll tell you why. Because you're going to lose. They're like, eh, pastor, she's full of herself. I say, uh, 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 I know my grace. Don't. Don't try to compete with me. We are not the same. I say, we are not the same. 
When God put DNA in my spirit, you were not there. Mind your own DNA. When God put me and put a grace on my life, you were not there. Mind your own grace. Competition, competition, competition everywhere. In the house of God. Listen to people of God. God will not bring you where he wants you to be. When you have a spirit of discontentment upon your life. Impossible. Impossible. Because he calls it covetousness. And it's a sin in the Ten Commandments. It's wanting something that's not yours. I gotta have it. Because she have it, I gotta have it. Oh, oh, oh. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. This spirit of competition in the church of God. What is this nonsense nowadays? Be you and let me be me. Do you and let me. Listen, God spoke to me one day. He said, I will never use what I did not put in you. I will never use what I didn't put in you. You can want to preach the way you want. Walk like this big guy. I will never use it. You know now, you know. So, because I've been in the wilderness of Montreal, I've learned a few things. Before, you know, people come to your house, you're so excited to show them your house. And, yeah, you don't even notice what they're doing. Hey. They come to your house. Hmm. Quiet. You're like, what is this silence all about? Hmm. Hmm. In her head. Huh. Huh. Like that, and you're like, ew. They, they have that look, eh? Of covetousness on your staff. And you're like, is this a sister in the Lord? Today we're going down all the way. You see, I didn't come to play anymore. You know, when you compare, you can appreciate. When you compare, you can be happy for somebody. It's a spirit. Today we're going to deal with it. Because God wants us to be satisfied in him. He's like, am I more than enough for you? Stop comparing yourself. Discontentment. I wish I had this. I wish I had that. I wish I had that. I have to have this. I have to have this. And God is like, let me be more than enough for you. Let me be your provider. Let me be the one who will give you at the right season what you need. Stop writing, ri running and fussing about stuff. You know, we'll be so much happy if we stop fussing about certain things. Oh, you need to admire without requiring. Oh, the only way I can admire is if I can have it. If I can have it. Exodus 20, 17. Am I talking to somebody today? And Moses was content to dwell with a man. And he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter. Look at this guy, Moses. A prince of Egypt. Going into the wilderness. And the Bible said that he was content. No wonder why God used him powerfully. He had learned the secret. To be happy with a lot and with little. Amen. Hallelujah. So number one, we need to stop comparing. Number two, we need to enjoy what you have. 
play with the card you've been dealt with. Okay. I'm going to make it plain now. I'm going to go there. Play with the card you've been dealt with. Meaning what? Accept where you are at this season. Amen? I said accept. Can I make it more graphic? So imagine me. My son, autistic, 16 years old. Who here has a son who's 16 years old? How old is he? 13. No, no, he's too young. 6, 17, 18. Ezra. Imagine me comparing my son with Ezra. Do you know how, my kind of, how much torment I would go through? Are you hearing me? I said, accept what God has placed inside, in front of you. Accept it. I said, accept it. Until you accept it, God will not change it. Some people live with another kind of husband in their head. Accept that Kunta Kide the way he is. Accept him. He snores, accept him. Discontent, because we do not accept the things that's in front of us. We need to learn the secret of contentment. I tried it one day. I said, God, why my son is, oh, I'll take Ezra. Why my son, I wish my son was like Ezra by now who'd be in, some, in grade something. And I tried it once and twice and I decided this doesn't work for me. Because it brought me to a place of depression, torment, and satisfaction, bitter against God and his plan for my life. Are you hearing something today? Yeah. Accept what you have. I heard somebody say, true happiness is wanting what you have. True happiness is wanting what you have. Hallelujah. Do you know what else the enemy has been doing to us as Christians? We say things like, I used to say it, God, I'm glad I'm set free from it. When this happen, then I'll be happy. When my son come out of the center, then I'll be happy. When my husband stop doing what he's doing, then I'll be happy. When I get this car, then I'll be happy. When I get this big house, then I will be happy. Am I talking to somebody in this house? We need to tear this thing down because that's the enemy stealing from the joy that God has set before us. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength. Today I want you to do an inventory on your life. And start being grateful for the things that God has done in you. Sometimes we just need to go back. Look where we come from. To appreciate where we are right now. This is the secret to happiness. I tell you in marriage. This is the secret to a content woman or husband in marriage. Listen to me. We are not called to change our spouse. Did you hear me? You are not called to change your husband. You are not called to change your wife. We are here to evolve. Say evolve. Accept that wife of yours the way she is. Accept that husband of yours the way he is. Accept him. You have no power to change unless you want to control. If you want to turn him or her into a walking mat, go for it. But if you want to do it the way God calls you to do it, say accept. Look at this beautiful lady. Say, I accept you the way you are. Turn to your wife and tell that. <laughs> 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 
listen, listen, listen. It's all about acceptance. It's all about acceptance and appreciating. God is a God who is just. Listen to me, God is just. And God is a God who works in time and season. But God wants to appreciate every season of our lives. This one I'm talking about, I've lived it. I'll be happy only then. And then you leave discontent. Amen? Listen to me, single women and single men. Oh, the single ladies. Listen to me. You're busy trying to find a man who will accept you. You won't even accept who you are. You want a man to come to change you? He's going to destroy you. You know, <laughs> listen. Too busy. I'll be happy when I get married. And then you get married. I wish I was single again. I made up my mind in life, I'll be happy no matter what circumstances. I'll be content with whatever God brings my way. And the only way I can get there, if I start being grateful, I start seeing things in a positive way. Because I know, God, you love me. And because you love me, I can rest in you. I can set all my life in your hands. I know you will turn it to my advantage at the right time, at the right season. I might not know what you're working through this season. It might not make sense, God. It might hurt, my God. It might be painful, God. But today I set all my life into your hands. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, people of God, we will be more happy if we start seeing things that way. Settle. Settle in God. Settle in his capacity to make you who has called you to be. He said, I have learned to be in abundance and to be in few, in lack. And I have learned that secret of being content. Did you hear what I said today? So we start comparing ourselves. We enjoy what we have. We accept what we have. And we take it and we say, God, I thank you. Even the negative things, I thank you. Do you know, can I tell you a secret? Secret in my marriage. You know the very thing I did not like about my husband? Amen? And I might still not like them. I just accept them. It is what it is. Listen. Do you know those very things are those things that have brought me to where I am now? Do you know they are those things that have built my strength, my character? We are too busy trying to change things. And God is like, no, I want to change you, not the things. I want to build you up so you can carry. You can have enough muscle for your assignment upon your life. Listen, how can a woman like me can go to Montreal for three years without her husband if she had not learned to be by herself? All these years where he was running after you, 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 you don't know. I was home by myself crying. I need a clap offering for that one. <laughs> Listen. Listen. I used to cry about this very thing. But it is what it is. Listen, it is. Take your life the way it is and make the most out of it. And see God bring glory out of your place of pain, out of your place of suffering. Listen, 
We are not called to have the same kind of life. Are you kidding? Are you listening to me? Your sister didn't eat the same food you ate. Why do you think things will go the same way? People of God, the call of God and the assignment of God upon your life is more important than your comfort. Are you hearing me today? Sometimes we got to sacrifice our comfort of today to eat the fruit tomorrow. Did you hear me? You don't have to have things right away, every time, everywhere. No, 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 no. We are building generational marriage, generational business, generational ministry, generational relationship, friendships. We are building. It is hard. The foundation is hard. But when your eyes is on generational, you can allow to suffer a little bit because you know God is for you. And it's a matter of time that God will set it on a course. Hallelujah. I think I'm preaching very good. God is saying, am I more than enough for you? More than the things you want to have. More than the cars you want to have. More than the houses you want to build. More than the husband you want to have. Am I more than enough for you? Because from that place, I will give you your heart's desire. The Bible says, the answer to all this, all this thing is what? Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Thank you. That's the secret. That's the key. Delight yourself in, and he will give you of your heart. He didn't say when. He just assured you he will. He didn't say how. He just said he will. Do you understand today? Today we are eating good meat. It's going to make us happy, strong, and steady in God. It's going to make us build strength for the kingdom of God, strength for the assignment, strength for your marriage, strength for your life. Amen? Oh, 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 I'm so late. Last one. Life is not about things. Luke 12, 15. Right. He said to them, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possession. Life is not about things. That's what he's saying. Life is about relationship. Love God. Love people. Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possession. Anything that controls you needs to go. We want to pursue purpose and destiny. We want to go for what God has for us. But we cannot be consumed. Who's ready to delight himself in the Lord today? Stand up. If this message is for you, you're dealing with discontentment. I want you to come here fast. We need to deal with that. And I want somebody on the keyboard. Hallelujah. God is saying, I'm more than enough for you. Yes, I want to bring you where you need to be. Yes, I want to bless you. Yes. I don't want you to be controlled by things. I don't want you to look at somebody's life thinking they got it better. I have you and I'm more than enough for you. And I will bring you where you need to be. If you have that issue where you find yourself comparing and it brings you to a place of discontentment in your life, I need you to come here. We need to deal with this issue in our lives. Where are you not happy where you are at? We need to deal with that because God seems that he's okay with where you are at.
Hallelujah. I need you to hurry up. Right now, it's not about somebody else. It's about you. Because God wants to bring you rest. Rest, rest. God wants to settle your heart. And he wants to remind you that I'm your provider. That will make a way for you. I'll do that very thing you desire. But you need to settle your heart. You need to settle your heart. If you are here, you're dealing with competition. You are always in that mode. You want to compete in a negative way. I need you to come here. We need to deal with that because you are not here to compete with somebody else. But you are here to compete to fulfill the race of God upon your life. You need to come here. God wants to bring this, us into a place of strength and rest. God is saying, be still and know that he is God. Be still and know that he is God. Be still and know that he is God. If you are in a season of your life where you feel discontent because there are certain things they haven't happened the way you feel like they should have happened. God says, I'm at work in your life. Be still and know that I am God. God is saying, you're pursuing things more than you're pursuing me. God said, be still and know that I'm God. say I know the thoughts that I have for you thoughts of peace thoughts of success I have an expected end for you it's beautiful and it's marvelous in my eyes be still and know that I'm God to talk to somebody say he knows the end from the beginning he knows what he has put inside of you be still and know that I'm God he's a God of times and season he's the God of circumstances if you are here you feel weak because you've been suffering and struggling God wants to bring you into a season of rest today. Be still and know that I'm God. I'm the God of the luck and I'm the God of the abundance. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, I choose to be still today. And I choose to trust in you. God, today I enter your season of rest. I accept my situation. And I know you are my God. And you're in charge of my situation. There's people here, I just feel it in my spirit. You've been married with somebody, but you're regretting marrying that person. God says, be still, be still. Know that I am God. 
you realize it's not who you thought he was and you feel stuck and you keep looking back and the enemy is tormenting you lying to you telling you it wasn't God's will for you God said be still and know that I'm God I'm in your marriage I'm in your situation Say, God, today I enter this season of grace. God, teach me how to be content with what you have placed in front of me. I thank you, God, because I know tomorrow is greater, is better. Today I choose to be grateful. I choose to be thankful to every season of my life. And I choose to enjoy it. God, give me the eyes to see the way you see it. I'm going to ask my leaders to come and pray for these people. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Everything works together for good for those who are called. By his purpose, if my leaders can come and start praying for them. succeed from a place of rest people of God. God wants us to pursue what he has placed inside of us from a place of rest from a place where you are settled in your heart God doesn't want you to struggle inside and fight and fight God wants you to expand to evolve God wants you to enjoy every season of your life because every season of your life is a fruit of your destiny. Some season are seed for your future. You must bury them and be still and quiet and let God work in the darkness of your room, of your life, so that life can spread out. Some season they are hard. They are not season to run away from. It's to season to embrace and say, God, Keep working in me, God. Did you hear me today? This message is for you because God wants to bless you. But from a place of contentment. Not from a place of discontentment. Not from a place of covetousness. God does not work with darkness. God wants to bring peace and shalom in you first. He wants to bring rest so that he can release you to express who you are. Are you hearing me today? If you are here and you're dealing with financial struggle, you're looking for a job, I want you to come here. We need to pray for you, for God to provide for you. He's more than enough. He's more than enough for your destiny. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. Enter the rest of God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where are my intercessors? I need you to come and pray. Father God, we give you praise. Those who need a job, just lift up your hands. Father God, we give you praise. These are your servants. These are your sons and your daughter. Today we say provide God. Provide for your sons so that they can serve you. 
provide for them so that they can serve their family. Provide for their need, God. Make a way, open a job for them, God, where they can do what you have called them to do. Father God, I give you praise for favor upon the resume, for divine connections, God, upon their resume. Let your favor meet their resume, Father God. Make a way for them today, God. Let this be a day where they will testify of every door you would have opened for them, God. Father God, I thank you. I say be still and know that he is God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I give you praise. I break that cycle of covetousness upon your people today in the mighty name of Jesus. I uproot that spirit that comes to violate the will and the call of God upon our lives. I thank you, Father God, for a spirit of contentment to come upon your church today where they settle, God, settle in peace in you, Father God. I give you praise, Father God, that every seed that's been sown in this house may bring fruit, Father God. Every seed of sacrifice, sacrifice of love, God. Let the fruit come up, mighty God. We give you praise, everlasting King. I thank you, mighty King. I thank you, mighty King. Thank you for divine assignments are about to come out of this house. Divine assignments that will propel them into their destiny, God. Divine, Father God, empowerment today that will push them into their destiny, everlasting King. I thank you, God, for divine setup today, God, that will propel them into their calling, mighty God. I thank you, mighty God. Yere baba sanda karaba shodorobo. Re baba sende kere basataka. Haraba sedeke. I hear the Lord saying, You shall eat the fruit of your labor. 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 Re baba sende kere baba she. Ye mamando korobo sedeke Reba ba seteke reba sotoko I set them off Lord on the divine course of destiny today I set them off set them off God Reba ba seteke reba sondo korobo sedeke For those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength They shall rise up mount up with wings like eagles Baba sondo korobo bo shere ba yende kere baba sereke raba baba baba sende kere ba yende kere baba raba baba sondo ko robo bo bo sereke I put an end to every dry season in the life in the mighty name of Jesus yende kere baba sondo korobo yende kere ba sondo korobo.
Listen me. Listen to me, people of God. Finally, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I say be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. I pray that he would grant you according to the riches of glory, of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man. I say today be strengthened by his spirit in your inner man. Be strengthened despite the challenges that you may be facing today. Be strengthened despite the difficulty you might be going through today. Be strengthened in your inner man. Be strengthened in your inner man. May the Lord grant you peace. May the Lord grant you joy. May the Lord grant you contentment. May the Lord grant you rest. May the Lord grant you blessing. May the Lord grant you the desires of your heart. May He perfect everything that concerns you today. May from today your life be, never be the same again. May by God set you on a course of not turning back. Of not turning back. Did you receive it today? Can we give a clap offering to the Lord? Praise the Lord. worship team to come here. We need one song just to thank the Lord for his goodness in our lives. Amen. wants to set you on a course of not turning back. Hallelujah. So it's like he's removing roadblocks. Say roadblocks. In front of you holding you back from running the course with all the strength that you need to accomplish.